In this video, we're going to talk about the Kaiwu 3D Tycoon. The Tycoon is designed to be a workhorse 3D printer with a lot of features and functionality built right into it from the factory. It's got auto bed leveling, a direct drive extruder, and a couple of other unique features, including its unique linear rail motion system that make it a very powerful 3D printer. And let me answer the question that everybody who is watching this is thinking right now. No, it doesn't fold. I wish it folded, it doesn't fold. We're gonna talk about that a little bit later, but just to get that out in the open, it does not fold. Let's start by talking about the build volume of the Tycoon. The Tycoon is 240 by 240 by 230 millimeters, which make it one of the rare 3D printers that's larger in the X and Y than it is on the Z, especially in this price range. Typically 3D printers like the Ender 3 have a build volume of 235 by 235 by 250 millimeters, or a similar ratio where they're a little bit taller in the Z than the X and Y. The Tycoon is a very quick assembly, and all you really have to do is take the Y gantry, slide it into the frame, it's four bolts to tighten down, and then you have four electrical connections to make, and then you have to screw on the two front feet. This process took me under 10 minutes. It's really easy and it's clearly designed to be a you know, very minimal impact on the setup side. So you get the machine, you unbox it, it's set up very quickly. Definitely not a kit printer, but it is shipped flat. And I wish it folded. It is, it is like the perfect size and shape for a folding printer. It even has handles on the top. These handles, you can actually pick the machine up and carry it. It would make so much sense if this thing could just slide up and you would have a machine you can carry around with you. I wish it folded. The motion system on the Tycoon is also pretty unique. It uses a belt-driven linear rail on the x-axis, which gives it a really smooth and repeatable motion. And the y-axis uses two dual smooth rods, which give it a lot of stability. I really like 3D printers that use two rods instead of a single one. It just gives the printer a bit more of a stable feel to it. It uses two threaded z-rods as well as two smooth rods on the z-axis. So the movement on the z-axis is pretty smooth. This is especially handy considering the constant undulations of both of those Z motors due to the auto bed leveling. So let's talk about the auto bed leveling for a minute. It's dead simple to use. It can be accessed from the menu of the 3D printer. Just select auto bed leveling and the printer will deploy the BL touch and automatically tap off on nine different points on the bed to get the values needed to calibrate the machine. The Tycoon also has a hidden synchronization belt for the Z-axis on the bottom of the printer, which makes sure that the two Z motors are moving in unison. It's an interesting feature, and I don't think I've ever seen a synchronization belt that goes under the motors before. The extruder module is very cleverly designed, and it packs a lot of functionality into a small volume. And you can see here, it's got a filament runout sensor built into the very top of the extruder that feeds into the extruder module, which has a chamfered inlet, so it's easy to put filament in, and the heat sink is actually built into that extruder. So it's kind of an interesting shape. I don't think I've ever seen one like that before. You can see here it's a direct drive motor and there's a BL touch mounted to the side. The part cooling fan is underneath the machine and it blows from the back. And then you have your heat break cooling fan on the front. So there's just a lot going on in this general area. One of the first things you'll see on the extruder is this big red wheel up front. This is attached to the extruder motor. So as the machine is printing, you'll see it slowly turning and you can manually turn it while you're loading filament if you wanna have a little bit easier time to get some of those tougher materials in. The Tycoon has these two metal plates on the sides. Kind of interesting, it's sort of half functional, half aesthetic. This one here, the controller board and the power supply are actually mounted to the yellow frame, but this one is just hollow, so it's not really attached to anything. It's got two bolts holding it in here, here, and then on the top. So it sort of, it kind of resonates when printing a little bit. So it negates a little bit of the effect of those silent stepper drivers, which is a bit of a bummer. I think if this had been held down tighter, it probably wouldn't resonate. Or if it was made of multiple pieces instead of just this one large piece. Ditto for this large yellow part over here. This is a bit more functional because it's holding on to the controller. It's open on the side though, which is kind of a weird choice. While it's printing, you can see all of the lights on the Robin Nano board blinking. Like during printing, all I see is this bright flashing red light and I'm just waiting for something to go wrong. I know this is super nitpicky, but because the machine is almost $500, I'm paying a lot more attention to these small design choices than I would if the machine came in a lot cheaper. The Tycoon comes preloaded with a few demo parts and I printed some of those here. The robot came out really good and I was actually impressed with the overall quality. You can kind of see that it's, it's designed to print without supports. It drooped a little bit here on the logo, but generally speaking, it's just a fun looking print and it looks really good. There's also this cap model built in. It printed very well. Uh, I'm happy with the overall quality of it. And then there's the bird whistle. It took me a minute to figure this one out. 
once it was printed, I couldn't get any sound out of it until I realized you have to cover the eyes of the bird and listen to how loud this is. It is absolutely deafening, but it's still a fun print and I like that it has some degree of functionality. And then there are two calibration type prints. One is an XYZ cube and this one, it came out really nice. There's a lot of sidewall detail um, and I didn't see a whole lot of drooping or anything like that on the X and the Y. And then there's this bolt, which again, it came out fine. I don't really have any complaints. The Tycoon doesn't ship with any first party software. It includes a copy of Ultimaker's Cura as well as a profile for the machine, but I went ahead and skipped that and just designed my own profile for Prusa Slicer like I do with most 3D printers. It tends to work a little bit easier and you get to take advantage of some of the more advanced features of Prusa Slicer. So to test out the profile, I printed this out. This is a model from Luby's Patreon. This is Lady Ermina, and it's a little winged weasel with armor. And I printed it using a rainbow filament. It came out great. I'm really happy with the detail on it. The support generated on the model just peeled right off with pretty much no resistance. And the overall level of detail on the model, it's good. So for a 0.2 millimeter profile, this thing printed out fast and it printed out at a pretty solid quality. So I'm really happy with the overall performance of the machine. Just from an aesthetic standpoint, this printer reminds me so much of the Lulzbot Taz 6, except it's been mirrored and the color is a little bit different. It just looks very visually similar, so it looks like one of the things that Kaiwu 3D is attempting is to get in that prosumer market. So printers that are closer to $2,000, and the price of this machine is just under $500. So it's not cheap. This isn't a printer that you're going to buy if you just want to tinker around or experiment. It's a printer that you're gonna buy if you have something that you want to print. If you're using a print farm or if you've got a product you're looking to get to market or you're just trying to do prototyping and you want something that works with not a whole lot of setup out of the box. It's not a very easy market to break into, but the Tycoon does have a lot of the features that you'd expect to find on a printer in that price range. The print platform on the Tycoon is very similar to the print platform on Ender 3 V2. It's that coated carborundum glass that locks parts down when they're printing, and then as they cool, you'll hear a little bit of a crackling sound and then they pop right off. It works really well. I personally prefer flex plates. I just like the ability to get large parts off very quickly by bending them, but it's hard to find fault with this platform because it just works. So I didn't have any problems with parts curling or warping and everything stayed locked down to the build platform while it was printing and I was able to remove it easily after it had cooled. Given the $500 price point, I think the Tycoon is a good buy if you're in the prosumer range. So if you're looking at 3D printers that are between $800 and $2,500, I think it makes sense to at least take a look at this machine and investigate whether it's gonna work for you or not. Some of the things I'd be concerned about are the level of support and the level of community. Those are two things I always like to look for when investigating 3D printers like this, because you want to see if other people online are going to be able to help you with any issues you run into, or will the company themselves be responsive if a part fails. Overall, it's a great printer. I just wish it bolded. So this is going to wind up turning into a summer project for me, and I'm going to have to design a hinge so I can actually fold this thing while it's printing, because it would be the perfect like travel printer. The two handles on top and a folding platform would mean this thing could fit in the trunk of a car flat, it reminds me a lot of the old PrinterBot Pro had kind of a similar mechanism, and it would just be great to have as like something you could carry with you, right? You could just grab it by the handles, take it and go. So that aside, that one minor nitpick aside, I think it's a cool printer. And if you have any questions about it specifically, feel free to leave them in the comments. As always, thanks for watching and have fun printing.